Welcome to a new Empires and Puzzles Books featured video. The new feature is going to be Empires and Puzzles Books interviews with top players in the game. So this is the first video of this series. We're going to be interviewing Keon Lee, who is most notably known as Happy Waffles in the game. You've seen him at the top of the leader charts in the monthly challenge events. Let's take an opportunity to jump in now and talk to Keon Lee and find what he's all about and what he loves and enjoys about Empires and Puzzles. As this is the first video, I'll be looking toward interviewing some other top players. So if you have suggestions or comments on who that should be, go ahead and throw them below and we'll see what we can do for the next videos. Thanks for watching. Welcome everybody to a brand new feature of Empires and Puzzles Books videos. We are going to start doing some interviews with top players and I thought it made sense to stop with one that is almost always at the top of everything. So I know him as Keon Lee. Most of you know him by various names that he's used at the top. I, I think he's in witness protection because he changes his player name so often. Yeah. Uh, I, I know him lovingly as just Waffles. Yeah. Uh, so Keon Lee, let's start with that. What What is your current player name and why does it change so much? Um, so my, my player name currently is Happy Waffle. I've changed it back. Um, but uh, people who have known me when I first started playing, I was actually using my original name, which was Kian Lee. Um, I changed my user ID about a year ago uh, when I left uh, Chef's Kitchen because of uh, the huge, um, uh, let's put it, scandal that was uh, uncovered. Um, I don't think we need to go into that in too much detail. I think people who know in the community who know will know. Uh, and I thought it would just be a nice clean break. So that's where I chose Waffles as one of my um, user IDs. And throughout the year, I would like keep changing the title in front of Waffles, um, um, whether it's a good waffle, ninja waffle, but it's, it's kind of like a, just a humorous play. Uh, I did recently change uh, my user ID to uh, Greedy's number one fan. Um, um, so Greedy, if you don't know, is a uh, a top Ukrainian player from the uh, Ukrainian uh, top Ukrainian alliance called Kobia. Um, he I watch him play a lot on uh, YouTube. Uh, he does stream stream his uh, hits, uh, and he is actually a, a really really tight player. He doesn't have necessarily the best roster or troops but he makes up with it with it by being just really uh tight with how he plays his bots and sequences his specials so um i thought it would be a nice tribute to him but i'm back to being waffles now all right excellent so we'll recognize you again at the top of the leaderboards so um uh, for those uh, who may not follow the top of the leaderboards uh, uh, waffles what would you prefer i call you keon or waffles yeah keon is fine waffles is fine um <laughs> People who know me old school will call me Kian, and people who know me now will call me Waffles. All right. Well, we'll go back and forth, I guess. So yeah. we're, we're, we don't necessarily see Waffles at the top of the global charts every day. He's not one who hangs out there, although he does float up there from time to time. Where we see him most often is at the top of the challenge events every month. And unlike some players that are master of the rare or master of the epic or master of the legendary, he is just the master. So you will see Kian at the top of all three legendary events fairly off, excuse me, all three challenge events fairly often, almost monthly. Kian, how, how many times have you won the rare challenge event? Um, so I think I've won it four times. Um, yeah, so including the recent uh, Taverns of Legends. So yeah, that, that's four rares. And I've only won epic ones, uh, which was mainly because I got fed up of trying to pull Finley, having did a huge number of pulls, not getting it, and decided I would just go win it. <laughs> that's one way to get it. All right, so you scored Finley on a win in epic. Now, I know one of your rare wins was much to my chagrin because you booted yeah. me in the last few hours of the last day. It was the first time that I had a chance to be first in an event. And then you and I really went at it for hours. You may not have been aware of it, but I caught you like every few minutes and then you you just kept outrunning me. Uh, yeah. And I went down to the wire and I just could not get you at the end. It was yours uh, and well-deserved win. Congratulations. But Thank I got to ask you, when you're in a battle like that, do you ever give up? Because you just kept going. So um, I I think it's down to experience because obviously having competed 
uh, already quite a lot. I knew where I needed to improve my scores on and where there were, uh, you know, holes uh, where I, you know, I had massive gains. Um, I generally speaking, I don't get into battles with people for uh, number one spots. Usually um, the at the top, uh, you know, the, the, the number of people who are competing for wins are very few and far between anyway, because it is really, really taxing. Uh, so the other guy who uh, normally uh, competes very heavily in events is Darian. And obviously he's a good friend of mine. And uh, we basically at the start of the month decide, you know, or, or we just be very honest with each other and say, well, who who is actually going for which category? Otherwise it's just going to be a slug fest and then we end up like wasting a huge amount of battle items. Right. Um, yep. Yeah, it can get costly. So what about legendary? How many times have you taken top spot in legendary? I've never won legendary. I've never been interested enough to win legendary. <laughs> uh, th this is something that, you know, Darian specializes in. Um, and uh, he's always been, well, he's still been egging me on to try and win legendary. But, um, you know, like the the only reason to, to win uh, at the moment is actually for the uh, sweet avatars. Um, and, and you know that's particularly true with uh, uh, or across the you know the rare and legendary. You know, epic's a bit different because there's quite a few key heroes that you can win, like um, uh, Finley uh, Jabberwocky when he was you know top uh, you know in top most top defenses, and then previously was Guardian Panther, but now it's a Gazelle as well. Um, but you know, like uh, if you look at the uh, the heroes you can win in legendary, it's actually not the best heroes, not the chase heroes that you want. Right. Um, so there's actually very little incentive. So it's more of like boasting rights to have the legendary avatar. Now, the reason I haven't really pushed for le legendary uh, avatars is because the, legend the, the, the avatar you win for legendary has been around for quite some time. So a lot of people already have those avatars, whereas, you know, with the, the rare avatar, the specifically um, the taverns and uh, what is it? Um, uh, Wonderland. Um, there's the. I think there's only been like they they've only gone around for three or four cycles. So there's only like three or four people who have the avatar. So it makes it a bit more exclusive. So right. that's why I, I've been competing in rare. Um, All right, nice. But um, well, I know you're in the top ten frequently. So even if you haven't claimed the top spot, you're you're obviously fighting for the the top mats as far as how many four star ascension items you're getting from being near near the top. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. So how many five-star heroes do you have maxed at this point? Uh, I think about 80 at the moment. I, to be honest, I've stopped counting once I hit about um, 65 or so because, um, you know, it, you, you can only use 30 five-star heroes uh, in, in war. Um, right. So, um, I, you know, I, I don't necessarily max heroes on, on a, you know, on a frequent basis. In fact, I, I have gone through like a, a period of like three months where I didn't even max a single hero because I was working on troops. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it is 80, if I'm not mistaken, which is actually uh, fairly low for uh, some people playing in like one of the top alliances. A lot of people are in the uh, hundreds by now. Right. Nice. Yeah. I'm, I think I'm in the low 80s, 82, 83, somewhere around there right now. Um, so let's, let's talk about emblem usage. Do you, are you an yeah. exclusive five-star emblemer or do you put emblems on the threes and fours? So I, the, the majority of my emblems go into five stars. Uh, I do have emblems of four stars and three stars, but, um, the, the ones that get prioritized are the, um, event heroes. Uh, so for example, in, uh, red, my emblems go to the, heroes I'm going to use for um, the mono blue team uh, and the mono green team uh, because you have to ha use mono green in Avalon where it's reflect blue. Um, for um, the uh, epic, it's the same. It's uh, the mono red team uh, plus the mono blue team, which you use for Grim Forest. Uh, and of course, I do have a couple uh, more uh, epic heroes, which I have emblemed up like uh, Costume Regards, uh, Proteus, who's actually really important for um, the uh, very fast wars. Um, but the majority of my uh, emblems go to um, five stars because at the top war cycle, um, mm. it's really, really hard to perform consistently uh, with uh, very low emblem 
heroes because all the defenses are really, really strong. And if you've ever uh, done a war against um, Departed, for example, you are literally facing the same defenses 30 times. Um, <laughs> yep. So it's essentially doing a solo war, basically, because you just face the exact same um, defense with every single hit. Yep. Yeah, it's a challenge. Uh, I've not faced Departed, but I've seen the screenshots of their war setup. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, players who are competing at the top of the challenge event understand why certain colors are the dominant on the on the various tiers. But in your words, explain why why ice would be the color to focus on for most rare events. Um, so the the reason you you don't you would go for the ice team for uh, rares is because uh, the there is uh, both a defense style and a elemental defense style and that's only exclusive to to ice there's no other color who has that combination mm -hmm. uh, in fact if you look at the rest of the rare uh, 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 setups the only color which other color which has a defense down is 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 green which is uh, either costume brienne or uh, costume ishtag um, so as a result of that, um, you, you gain a lot of power just by using mono blue. The other reason is, um, that costume gunner is such a, uh, great hero in terms of, uh, having cons consistency, uh, with your hits, because, uh, you can have a board, which is a bit wonky where its tiles are placed on only one side of the board, uh, but still, uh, get a clean clear off all the three uh, enemies just by uh, using mana on a uh, costume gunner early on. Um, so it helps, uh, allow, allows you to find the uh, a high score much easier than you would if you were to run other mono strategies. Sure, yeah, that custom gunner with the shared damage is, is huge. Uh, and you'll yeah. see players, I know even I, I used him uh, in, my, in my recent top placement in the the ninja tower event on yeah. some of the last levels. So even where you think five stars are needed when you're playing quickly and the damage isn't really that much of an issue, yeah. um, as far as the damage we're taking on, having that shared damage is super important. And uh, have you been using now with your ice team just recently, they released the Ulmer costume, which gives a huge attack boost. Have you been adding him to your arsenal of ice? So, I haven't. Uh, I know Darian has uh, messed around with him. Um, so the the issue with um, rare is that the damage output from your heroes, particularly if you have a fully emblem chick junior, is really really high. Um, so even on uh, rare fifteen, where the bosses have the highest amount of damage, you can still um, kill all the bosses using chick juniors special anyway um so there's actually it's great if you only have one chick junior that you can use costume alma but if you are you've already got two chick juniors uh, max emblem like i have there there's actually very little reason to to switch on to costume alma uh, because okay. those wizard emblems can be spent on um your uh event teams for uh mono green all right, so let, let's switch over to Epic then because there's a similar logic but different color. So why, why yeah. is fire the element of choice for the Epic Challenge events? So it's, it's the exact same concept. You, so you have your damage share and defense down with Wilbur uh, and a elemental defense down uh, for uh, red, which is uh, Falcon. Now in um, the uh, Epic, you have other choices like using mono blue, uh, but then you would be using a... Uh, three-star hero such as um, Nodri in that thing. So you'll be losing out slightly on tile damage. Uh, but above all, for Mono Red, um, the other thing, the great greatest addition is the new uh, costume for Colin. Uh, his damage output is completely insane and he's essentially made um, runs a lot more consistent and a lot, uh, uh, a lot easier. So, uh, for example, in the past... Um, for many events, you could not uh, one cycle or, or, or complete the, the uh, Epic 14 using just one move. Uh, but since we have got costume Colin with max emblems, you are able to, to do that in one cycle. So it has greatly uh, improved, again, consistency and, and improved the high scores for, for the, that level. If you just look at the straight math of the basic card, Costume Colin is hitting actually harder than most five-star fires. There's yeah. only a, a handful that actually hit harder than he does. Yeah. 
All right, so let's talk a little bit about um, who, who are you? Where are you from? What part of the world are you living in? Yeah, so uh, I'm, uh, I live in the United Kingdom at the moment. Um, I was born uh, in Malaysia. I grew up in Malaysia and uh, moved to the UK in, uh, when I was 18 for university. I came here to uh, study medicine. Uh, I decided to stay on and work here and marry an English girl. So uh, as a result of that, I have been stuck here for the majority of my life. Um, I work as a children's doctor, um, a pediatrician, um, but uh, obviously I still have a bit of time to, to play this, this game. Sure. Excellent. Yeah. Especially on the weekends, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends. Um, I, obviously, as a junior doctor, you're, you're, you work really, really hard and you don't really have that much time. But as you uh, go up in seniority, you do get a bit more uh, spare time on the weekends and even on the weekdays as well. So sure. it's helped. Well, please uh, make sure the EMP community knows when you have a busy challenge event weekend. So we all have a shot at some of those top spots. Uh, I, I try to, to you know, uh, keep my uh, weekends clear when I, 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 I'm, uh, there's an event going on and, and swap those, uh, my own call shifts. Sure, sure. So, uh, and, and Malaysia, I'll tell you, interestingly, uh, my wife and I, like two months before COVID broke out worldwide, we did a round the world trip. And one of our stopping points was Kuala Lumpur, the capital of Malaysia. So yeah, uh, we absolutely loved it there. Do you get home much? Um, I do. Uh, but uh, obviously I haven't been home in a while because of COVID. COVID mm-hmm. uh, I try to go back uh, at least every year to see my parents and also my, my sister who lives in Singapore. Uh, but, you know, at least we have um, um, technology so that we can still keep in touch uh, despite uh, being miles away. Sure. So uh, I assume then you're, you're probably bilingual. Uh, I speak uh, three languages, actually. English is obviously my, um, uh, the, the language I'm most fluent in. We had to learn Malay when we were in school. Uh, and as being of Chinese heritage, I also speak a bit of Cantonese as well. Although uh, I'm first to admit that my Cantonese is not the best. All right. I'm sure it's better than mine. I'm, I'm still <laughs> working on English after 40 plus years, but I do... Uh... I appreciate and I'm jealous of people who can speak more than one one language. Uh, my wife is multilingual, so she's she's my C3PO when we travel. She <laughs> translates for me. So let's get down and dirty and talk about raid and war attack strategy. Are you a, a three two, a four one, a rainbow, mono? What 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 do you bring to your arsenal when you're ready to attack? So I generally go three two. Um, I have tried all strategies, so I um, I do think that every single strategy is viable. Um, but uh, for me, uh, I really, really struggled uh, to play the boards right when I was uh, going mono. And I did make myself go mono for about six months uh, for wars. And um, I really struggled in terms of, you know, playing the board right and, and, and working the boards when you don't have a good board. Because I think what a lot of people uh, don't understand is that it, it's easy to win if you have, you know, the, you know, a great starting board with um, all the colors or tiles that you're bringing or, you know, an opening diamond, but it's another thing to actually, you know, eke out the victory when your uh, starting board is, is a bit rubbish uh, or the, you know, the tiles are all over the place. And, you know, that's, that's the type of victories that gives me the greatest satisfaction mm-hmm. because you kind of like feel you have earned that victory. Uh, and for me, what I found was uh, going 3-2 with a double healer strategy, which I, I know lots of people are not a big fan of, um, gives me the greatest consistency to actually eke out the victory. Um, I put it a very similar analogy to, you know, this game called Magic the Gathering. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So some, some people like playing very aggressive strategies, you know, where they go all out and try and win very quickly. Uh, I'm the type of person who likes to play a controlling style where my, I set up not to lose first. And then it may take me, you know, 10 minutes to win. But as long as I win with one second left on the clock, that still counts as a win. Sure. Are you, um, uh, are you a, a, a learned chess player by chance? Um, I used to play chess as a, as a, as a, as school in school. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, so I do know a bit of uh, chess, but yes, I would class class myself as the type of person who plays really defensively and and looks for my opponent to hang themselves. Yeah, yeah. When I I used to play tournament chess, and there's a, a a definitive difference between a king pawn game that tends to open the board and get aggressive versus a queen pawn game that ties things up and makes yeah. it more positional. Uh, and yeah. I I definitely was more. And which makes sense because it fits my personality, right? Because I'm predominantly a mono player, at least on the five yes. stars, uh, that I like that aggressive play. For me, uh, I, the 3-2, especially with the double healers, like I just always feel like I don't have enough firepower to actually eliminate the enemy fast enough. Like you really are wearing them down. It's an attrition battle. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and I, I've been experimenting a little more with that. And I do do 3-2 in... Uh, the rare and epic events because you don't have the the mana troops so for yeah. me uh one of the things that makes uh mono strong for me or my preference is one i have really built up troops i think a lot of people get frustrated with mono because they don't have substantial troop support and yeah. and they're, they're just not strong going in and then you have the mana troops which help obviously the speed so as long as you're collecting a few tiles you can get your team your entire team up up to speed pretty quickly yeah. so i do have a lot of respect for the three two game it just does not fit my my play style uh, at least on the fives and i want to say I absolutely respect that you said that most strategies are viable uh one of the my personal pet peeves are the the three two players that are almost biblical about it and they have to convert you uh and if thou shalt not play mono uh i, I think no, I, as I said, I did try try mono for six months. I just I really struggle, and you know, um, uh, I I really respect like there are players like Gotti, for example. You know, he plays mono so well, and I watch him and go like, Jesus Christ, how do you even win with that board? You know, <laughs> uh, but that's just you know because he all he does is mono, and so he can see the plays better. Mm -hmm. And similarly, you know, as a three two player, I I see the moves I need to make for for that that specific strategy. All right, so. Let's talk about some of the um, superstitions or mythologies that are in the game. So, for example, do you believe that the boards are rigged? <laughs> uh, RNG is RNG, uh, in my opinion. Um, the if I mean, if you look, if you look at the boards, um, there are uh, as many good boards as there are atrocious boards where there's no chance for you to win. So I think people are, you know, they, they have this observational bias where, you know, they forget, you know, they have the uh, as many opening boards where there is an opening diamond where they cascade and they win within, you know, two or three moves or even one move like I saw mm -hmm. in your video. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, you don't have these uh, opening boards where there is literally one move you can make and it's a really bad move. Um, but I think the majority of bots come down to the, and I, I think there's about maybe 80, 90% of bots come down to these um, mediocre average bots where you actually uh, can eke out a victory if you, you play uh, strategically or smart. Uh, and that's where, um, you know, um, you, you earn your money as, as a player. Sure. Excellent. I don't, I, I... I don't want to give any credence to these, so I won't call them out by name, but what is your feeling on summons methods? <laughs> um, right. Uh, I have absolutely, I don't do superstitious pulls. Um, <laughs> when I, so uh, I, I, you know, when I looked at um, the, this very popular summoning method uh, of uh, summoning five stars, what I realized when I worked it up mathematically was that, um, it actually is true because it doesn't guarantee you that very rare 0.2% hero. It just guarantees you a five star, whether that's a season one five star or uh, a event uh, epic, uh, you know, hero of the month, or whether it's the that rare chase hero that you want. So if you actually put all the odds of drawing that five star together, um, any five star together, then actually the the odds actually stack up. And you, it works. So people say to me, oh, it works, you know, about 70% of the time. And that's true because, you know, if you work out the odds, it actually works out as 70% of the time. So, uh, yes, it works, but it works because that's how the odds work. So, right, um, right. yeah. All right. So let, let's talk about some contr contr yeah, controversial statements that you hear players make sometimes. So like, so respond to this one. Um, Pay to win. If, if you spend enough, you're going to win. 
<laughs> so if you spend enough, you you give yourself a a better chance of winning. But at the same time, uh, I see a lot of people who have got uh, insane rosters with insane troops who cannot play a board properly and cannot sequence their their specials properly. So uh, yes, give, you know, like when you you spend a lot, you're going to have more tools available to you, but you still need to be able to use those tools correctly. So um, I think there's maybe 10% of it is true, but I think a lot of it is still down to the player. Sure. Yeah. I, um, years ago, I used to race cars and I liken it to the guy who showed up with, we have these people who'd show up with very expensive cars that were yeah. extremely modified at a high dollar, but for some reason they just couldn't turn a good lap time. Like they just yeah. had no, <laughs> no way to put the power to the ground and control the car. Yeah. So you can, you, you can give somebody the best heroes and troops, but that does not mean yeah. they're going to find the finish line. Because they still need to build the right teams as well. And actually, uh, with uh, embleming as well, it actually puts a lot or more in terms of planning, in terms of building the right teams, having the right emblems on your heroes to uh, play in the bots, right? To, you know, so there's actually a lot of facets uh, in terms of actually being really good at, at the game. So with everything you've accomplished in the game, what are you most proud of? Oh, um, I, that that's easy. That it was actually placing top ten in legendary using a four star team. Oh, uh, awesome! <laughs> I, I did it. As, I did it as a joke. Um, so that was the same uh, month I won uh, epic uh, using uh, uh, the same four star team uh, to get Findlay, and I, I I actually did it as a joke uh, to uh, annoy a friend of mine. So he was asking for some um, help uh, with. Um, events and you know was sharing scores with me uh and i just said to him look you know this is how you do it and he just couldn't understand the concept so i kept sending him uh scores on a you know minute by minute uh update and i i, I kind of like completed legendary in about three hours um using a four-star team and sending him the scores and he just like <laughs> got really <laughs> mad with me because uh, you know he was trying all these five-star heroes yep yeah that's great that is a fantastic story i'm sure you frustrated more than just him <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I don't think many people knew about that as well so it's only a small number of people i i told that actually i i have you know top 10 legendary twice actually using a four-star team excellent now so that actually hits two that hits one point we just talked about and a question I was about to have. So the point that we just talked about was that money doesn't buy wins. So obviously most players, even with a minimal investment, should have access to a lot of four star heroes. So that's not yeah. something that would have been a high dollar investment. Now I assume you were using them with four star troops, but even so, it, it's still probably a manageable from a from an economic investment standpoint. Yes, and this was actually back at a time where my troops weren't really great. Um, so I had uh, my highest troop was a level 23 mana troop and the rest were a mishmash of like level 11s, level 5s, critical okay. troops. Um, so you definitely can uh, do that. You, it's just having the know-how to do that, uh, how, to, how to actually do it uh, that, you know, makes the difference. All right, excellent. So that, now that brings me to my next question, which is how people would have known that you were using that four-star team. So in the last few months, Small Giant changed the dynamic of the, the, the leaderboards in a lot of events that we, are, we, we have no control over the fact that they are now displaying the last team we use to improve a score. So in the past, people used to, you know, like I'd throw up five Dawas or something like just yeah. so people didn't know that. What's your feeling on that shift? Um, to be honest, I don't think... Uh... At, you know, for people who event, it is such a great secret anyway. The people who are competing at right at the top, you know, we know what the, the teams you need to run, you know, to achieve those scores. Uh, it's kind of like there to troll and to um, make fun of the, the people who are like not nowhere near competing to say like, well, how, how is this guy doing it with this team? Um, so that that's why when I place uh, put my you know four star team there, no one really took notice. Everyone probably thought I was just you know trolling them with the, yep. the, the same four star epic team. Yeah, I I I have found that now. I need to learn a new way to troll. So last month <laughs> I was in the top ten in legendary, uh, but on the last day I made sure that I improved my last improvement score was with a nature team, even though the event was <laughs> reflecting nature. <laughs> 
So I was the only yeah. one in the top 10 with a green team. Yeah. Uh, now I had a push at the end. So that ended up not being the last one recorded, but it was up for, for the better part of the last day that I had a nature team up in the top. I did is, see that. Yes. What, what is What is your feeling on the current system for, for trophies and global 100? Um, so I think the system's broken anyway. And uh, part of it is because the, there are a couple of people who use bots. I'm sure um, you may or may not be aware of, the, you know, such programs um, that they will achieve a high score and then use their uh, bot program to stay uh, online for a long period of time. Um, so that's why, you know, this whole um, leaderboard um, thing is of very little relevance to me anymore uh, having you know how many cups you have or you know how long you stay at number one means nothing because you can you know you can stay on number one for a you know arbitrary long time just by using a bot program yeah i pulled a, uh, I didn't address i didn't specifically address bots and i've seen that lately it looks like small giant is cracking down on that little bit and sending warnings to players who are using bots but I did try to pull the curtain back on that uh, a few weeks ago. I put a video up on the illusion of the top 10 global because you do. And that yeah. is how you it's not that. And don't get me wrong. You have to be a strong enough player to get to the top and earn a top score. But if you can time that right specifically so that people are offline and can't revenge you, uh, you yeah. can stay there for a long time. And once you run out their their tower, you, they'll miss the opportunity to revenge you. So you can stay there practically indefinitely, if not in the top spot, at least in the top 10. I, I would be a fan if, if they, if they put a, a, a timer on it, that after six hours, you're, you're fair game if you're in the top 10 or something along that line. So if you're in the top uh, 100 leaderboard, they, they can revenge you mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, even if you're online. I think that's one of the features that has been there for quite some time now. Um, but it just means that you won't be, uh, randomly attacked by um or be paired with other people uh, right. who are perhaps you know in the 2800 cup range when you're at 3200 and lose lots of cups um yeah, so, I, uh, so that's how yeah that's what i was suggesting is after six hours you become fair game for anybody yeah. not just revenges and yeah. i think that would stop some of that choking that happens at the top because i notice uh when i do a cup run I get to a point where I can't actually attack anybody for improvement because nobody yeah. at the top is playing or they're all, I should say they're, they are playing, they're online in some capacity. Um, all right. So let's get on to another topic that um, uh, I guess causes some players, some groans. What's your feeling on nerfing and buffing? Um, so I, so I, I really feel quite strongly against nerfing, uh, not because uh, you know I have such heroes and I feel that it's uh, unfair that you know they should be uh, nerfing something I've already had. But I think uh, part of the problem with um, the uh, people screaming out for nerfs is that um, they have very unrealistic expectations. So I think the the most recent one was uh, with the nerf of Frick and Odin, and um, there was quite a lot of um, uh, who ha in the forums uh, screaming for nerves for Frick and Odin because they were too powerful, they hit too hard. Uh, and one of the main proponents uh, for nerves was uh, a player who posted a 50 minute video on YouTube uh, moaning constantly about you know how Frick and Odin were too powerful, they hit too hard and killed his team too quickly. And yet when you look at the and analyze his 15 minute video um, you quickly realize that um, there is quite a lot of uh, inherent flaws with his argument because uh, he was using an emblem uh, five stars he was using very low level troops uh, he had very poor team composition uh, composition and then uh, there was very poor, poor board play etc etc but i think more realistically is that uh, you need to ask yourself if you're going in against a a fully emblem defense with you know stacked troops and you're trying to bring 
you know, all these mini heroes, then you cannot then complain and say, well, they hit very hard because, well, that's what they do. That's why you emblem them. Right. And I think that's something what uh, small giants have realized when they uh, have recently been very liberal with, with regards to, you know, the emblems, because it got to a point where there was very heavily emblem defenses, but there was not em- enough emblems going around for the attack teams mm-hmm. to make make a good, um, you know, uh, attempt at you know hitting those those defenses um i do think that uh buffs uh they they there, there are a lot of heroes that they can buff but i don't think small giants are active enough in buffing heroes uh, and in a lot of cases they're using a paywall to try and buff the heroes so costumes is a very good example of mm-hmm. you know a, a buff which is hidden behind a paywall and um the other one which you may uh, have read about is this limit breaker thing to buff all your heroes. That's another uh, paywall in you know incentivized thing where they could have easily just increased their stats for all these heroes, but no, they've, they've decided to hide it around a, another paywall. So uh, <sighs> along that line, um, what's your feeling about power creep? It, it it's really bad. I I think um, the 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 developers are running out of. Uh, need to be a bit more ingenious in terms of um, finding uh, new ways to get people excited over heroes uh, rather than just releasing a blatantly improved version of, um, you know, a pre-existing hero. So, um, you know, the new season four um, five-star Dr. Moreau, um, he's essentially Drake, but uh, with his better stats, his stats are what, you know, what Drake would be with, with, you know, 14, 15 uh, talent emblems right. on him. Um, and that's that, that kind of power creep is is not good. I think um, they they there's there's lots of opportunities to release interesting mechanics, which they haven't explored enough of, uh, interesting heroes. So a good example would be someone like Lord Loki. So he's not overpowered, but yet he's a very fun mm-hmm. hero to play yep. with. Um, Lapiota is another one where you know uh, she's not overpowered, but again, excellent, great fun, you know, to to mess around with with offense. I think they need to focus more on that rather than just releasing insane heroes. And I think there's a new hero that they have dropped into be- be- beta called Morel, uh, which is just an insane version of Finley. Uh, right. It's a five star blue, hits all for two twenty damage at. Uh, but uh, has the um, skill that if it's the first special, it does 30% more attack. So essentially the first time it's hitting for 250 over all heroes and it does a minus 34% defense down for three turns, which is undispellable. I mean, you might as well just put your Finley into the garbage can and or, or you know, that's why they want to release a, a costume Finley to, right, to right. make it more relevant. Um, so that's that never ending power creep, which I find very um, annoying. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that with the uh, the unique. I, I prefer when they challenge themselves to come up with a unique way to use specials. And I smiled when you were saying because the first two that came to mind were Lord Loki, where he's stealing basically another. You know, you, you steal the the enemy's hero and make make their special your own. And then Lepiota, who just came out, who is a fascinating hero where you can actually ghost one of the enemies. Uh, and along those lines, you know, I felt the same way when they first came out last year, I guess it was with Jabberwock. That was a very unique way to, to hit somebody where you're, you're hitting from the sides. So I do, I get, I get more excited now about these heroes that are doing something unique or, or allowing us to look at the game in a different way. Um, so what's, what's your feeling on snipers? Are they done or are they still relevant? Um, sni- snipers will have the day, they will come back. Um, I think the at the moment, the met- meta game has gone into this very um, attack on everyone um, business. Whereas, in uh, if you look back, um, I don't know, last year, exactly this time last year, when Teluria was the uh, main um, uh, uh, threat in terms of defenses, you had lots of heroes that hit three, like Grave Maker. Uh, being the 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 support heroes, and then if you look back during when Gwyn was um, the uh, tank of choice, uh, it, there was snipers supporting her. So I'm sure they will come back. Um, you know, it it really depends on the meta game. You know, like at the moment, Grave Grave Maker is quite a 
not a very efficient hero as well, right at the top. If you are fighting lots of defences who run down at tanks, he's just not very good. Uh, but I'm sure if, you know, for whatever reason, green tanks do become the thing again, you know, he, his value will improve again. And, and that's what I like, you know, that the hero's uh, power increases and decreases based on how the metagame evol- uh, evolves. And they've not had to nerf Gravemaker, even though he was absurdly powerful, you know, a year ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, and I, I've noticed with the, the change in the meta in the last year. So for I've been playing about two uh, years and four months, roughly. And I would say for the better part of two years, the, the, the main attack, the, the goal of the attack at the beginning was to figure out how to kill the tank, you know, and get that advantage, yeah. the 5-4 advantage. However you do it, eliminate that tank. But I've noticed in my own play style, especially facing tanks like Barra and Freya, I actually don't want to kill the tank right away because it's now exposing the dangers of like a friggin' Ona Odin flank. So yeah. I am playing more of a strategy of how can I keep the tank alive and kind of feed some tiles to them and deal with that while I can get my my heroes up to speed so I can start eliminating from the sides. Have you noticed anything with that or are you still uh, try to pop the tank? No, so I think the, the strategy right now is... Uh especially if you're fighting lots of ninja defenses is uh, the it's more of an attrition and grind war where uh, specials are less effective and you're moving more towards uh, tile damage which you know was a thing you know a few years back um so right now um i mean if you look at the the way the ninja defenses are set up with uh the the three ninjas cobalt uh garnet and Onyx, and then you have Frick. Um, they have a very high chance of dodging uh, stuff, so uh, you can't be guaranteed to kill anyone other than Odin. Um, so as a result of that, um, you the most you know consistent way is actually to be throwing tiles at them. So actually, what I found is that uh, um, the an attrition based strategy where you heal and and use tile damage to kill the um, the heroes has has uh, come around now. Uh, and probably will, you know, may stay for a bit until, you know, the, the way the meta changes and evolves. Um, yeah, I think with the, the change in the defense team dynamics in the last few months, we've also seen a shift away from having any healers on the defense team, unless it's Garnet. Uh, yeah. You have a lot of these teams that have a bear or free a tank, and then they yeah. just are supported by fast hit all characters behind them and i can see where your point is you know you have two healers that just keep you alive and you just keep throwing tiles you know i've been watching uh, some of the attack revenge videos that people have sent me against mine and i'm currently using freya and i mm. i find it intriguing to just watch how they just are slowly eating away like there's not this big kill the tank it's just free is yeah. just losing a little bit every turn uh, and I'm still not in a position that I'd like to put a healer back in that team, at least not for raiding, because it's a. I, I don't know that a healer is that important on defense on a one round fight like a raid. Uh, wars, I think it's more relevant sometimes to have a healer because you could have that second or third flag coming at you. Yeah. What, what's your feeling on the raid formations that they beta tested globally? Um, so I, I mean, I tried uh, versus. Uh, you know, I didn't set my defense. I, I did, didn't change my defense, uh, but I did, you know, rate a lot, you know, trying against all the uh, various formations. I think it's fun. It'd probably be a nice idea to shake up wars so that it's not so monotonous. Um, but um, I do think that some uh, formations are probably a bit more uh, powerful and favors defense uh, than others. Um is Agreed. that good? Yeah, probably because uh, you know, at a, at the moment, war is a bit uh, stagnant uh, in that um, most uh, people who are playing at the top war cycle uh, are, cons- are are going come getting back to consistently going five one six six zero in war. So um, you do need something to you know give the advantage back to defense. So it's not so. Oh yeah, it's you know the person who didn't go six zero is is going to lose your your team the war. Um, All right, excellent. All right, well I'm I'm mostly out of questions now, but I yeah. I do have one that I saved for the end because it's a selfish question. So okay. if you were going to give Empires and Puzzles books advice from the videos you've seen or you know the challenge events, what would you say is the the thing that I need to do to improve my game? 
Um, so what I've noticed when you do events uh, is um, there are certain boards that um, you I wouldn't have necessarily gone gone all in uh, with with my items. I'm not sure what your uh, how much items you burn uh, to 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 place in the top rankings, uh, but I'm very very cheap with regards to how much items. Uh, so I was talking to another player from uh, Departed the other day, and she was mentioning to me that she was using about. Uh, she had crafted 250 dragon attacks uh, for legendary. And I said, like, you know, that's really, really high. I usually do about 100, 150 at most. And I usually use about 80 to 90 of them. Um, I usually just do a single run. Um, so I look for the right board. And you, you, you get you get there when you you are experienced. And I'm sure you're experienced enough, like, doing these events um, in terms of uh, where you uh, need to go all in and... Um, you know, when I was streaming events um, a, a month, uh, is it? It's, yeah, it's almost a month ago. Um, I did point out like the, the boards that a lot of people would have gone all in on. And I, I stopped and like quit uh, and said like, look, you know, this is the board that is a trap because you think that um, you're going to get a high score from. And I know from my experience that I, I would just end up being disappointed with the scores mm -hmm. um, uh, from that. So it's, it's taken a lot of experience, but, you know, I have been, doing events now and consistently placing for the best part of a year and a half now so um. yeah it's it is incredible how efficient you are i i i have improved greatly in the last year but i am still very wasteful with the weapons and the thing that keeps me afloat is that i do so much farming i mean i yeah. I, I have an almost infinite supply of weapons for the challenge event so i don't I can kind of afford to be a little wasteful there. You know, I, I tend to go into each event with over a thousand of each item, which is <laughs> well is more than you would ever need. Uh, so I, I, it allows me to be a little more experimental and a little more sloppy, but I think that's a fair critique to be a little more uh, efficient there. Um I just totally lost my train of thought. I was going to go somewhere else. Yeah, I forgot. I did have another question for you earlier. So Mythic Titan or Ninja Tower? Um, so I really hate the Ninja Tower. Uh, <laughs> you can see from my disdain that, you know, I refuse to um, actually do it properly. And and this, I think this month was the first month that I actually tried to do it properly. Um, I, I always joke like my mythic tower strategy, uh, myth ninja tower strategy was to start the level, put it on auto farm, and go make myself a sandwich. Um, I just think that uh, ninja towers comes around too frequently, uh, and it's such a drag because your flags don't stack, um, so you have to use them on the day. And you know there are some days that you know I'm completely tired from work, coming home really late, and have to do my ninja tower hits. And the biggest issue that I have with Ninja Tower is that I oftentimes have to switch between teams uh, with each level, and that's a complete chore. So uh, they either need to make it less frequent or they need to make it uh, shorter. Um, so, But I, I enjoy um, Mythic Titan more because uh, you're, as an alliance, you're doing it uh, to achieve a common goal, uh, which is to uh, place high and to give everyone else a chance at, you know, um, getting um, a higher number of emblems. And I think that benefits, you know, 29 other people, not just yourself. So that's why right. I, I enjoy doing Mythic Titans. Yeah, it is. Um, those two events are a stretch because they're the only events that we can use the heavy weapons, the, the, yeah. the Hunter's Lodge level weapon. So, you know, when Scrolls of Alteration and Hurricanes and things yeah. along that line are as rare as they are in the game, we really have to be judicious where we're using them. Uh, I, I find it challenging just because the rewards in the Ninja Tower are significantly higher, but you are using more weapons to get those higher rewards. Uh, I, I find that the, the tower to be the most challenging thing in the game for me, but you're right. It's definitely a, a, a solo experience versus that team effort. I recently changed alliances and the alliance I'm in now is all about the Mythic Titan. And we were, we were shooting for top 10 and ended up fifth. So yeah. <laughs> we did very well in this last, uh, titan i think the thing that gets challenging to me is with us even pushing that hard i walked away from the mythic titan with 270 emblems my wife who was not completely committed to the event that weekend she actually only did three flags like only yeah. three flags on the mythic titan and she got 170 emblems so when you can see that you don't 
you know, you're not going to do three flags in the Ninja Tower and still walk away with a pile of emblems. Like you yeah. got to earn them a little bit. So I think that's sort of where I am with weighing between the two. Um, so for, for, for the viewers out there who are getting to know you maybe for the first time and, and, and learning a little bit about your gameplay, if you had to give them one piece of advice or leave them with some words of wisdom, go for it. The floor is yours. Yeah. So my biggest uh, thing is um, ultimately this is a game. Um, enjoy it. Don't get angry over, you know, bad RNG because bad RNG will happen. Um I personally believe that um, if you uh, have a bad war hit or if you have a bad string of pulls, uh, turn off your device, walk away, go get some fresh air, go have a cup of coffee, um, but don't do the silly thing of raging and like, you know, do rage pulls or do rage war hits because it's just going to lead you to do things that you will um, regret um, later down the line. Um, and I think that's one of the good things in our alliance. If we have modified the war strategy to prevent people from rage hitting, um, so that if you do bounce, you know, you, you you're told just to leave that team rather than go for the clean uh in that, you know, um, bad state of mind. Um so yeah, keep keep your zen, enjoy the game and rather rather than you know get cross about things that are beyond your control. Excellent. Well, Keon, I really want to thank you for your time. I really appreciate you being the uh, initial video of this series, which at least well, I'm hoping to make a series out of interviewing some of the top players to get some perspective. I think it's interesting to get to know who are these people that are behind these uh, player names that we see bouncing around the top. So I lied. I do have one last question. Okay. Are pancakes better? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Pancakes are waffles without any syrup trap, so they all slide in. <laughs> so for anybody who doesn't get that, uh, Keon has a, a, a teammate who, is his name permanently Pancakes no, no, Are no, Better? It's, it's, it's Darian. He, 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 he changed it to Pancakes Are Better to troll me. Okay, yeah. And it was a good troll, so it's fantastic. <laughs> all right, well, well, we'll see both of your buttery and syrupy heroes at the top of the next challenge event. Thanks okay. again. It was nice meeting you. you. Enjoy Thanks. your weekend. Thanks. Bye-bye.